So in this video, I want to talk about materials and we're going to keep it pretty simple. Just materials that you'd use in a low poly model or a low poly render. Now materials are a shader and shaders are chunks of code that tell the computer how that particular face is going to get drawn or to be a little bit more specific, how light is going to interact with the face that that material is assigned to. So let's take a look at the scene that I've got here. I've got three cubes and one light, and I've also got a plane underneath it. If I render this. You can see the cubes are just shades of gray with the one in the middle being a little bit brighter or lighter because the light is closer to it. So let's change that. Let's add a little bit of color to our objects with a material. So to do that, I'm going to select the cube in the middle and then come over here to my materials properties. At the top, you can see the material slots. And right now we just have one material that's gray. It's called material. I'm going to rename this ink. And it's really important to name your materials. If you don't, Blender's just going to give it default names like material, material one, material two. It gets really confusing which material you actually want to use because these can be reused uh, across multiple objects. And I'm going to come down here to the base color and I'm going to give it a color, uh, some sort of shade of pink, something like so. And when I do that, nothing happens, nothing changes in the viewport. That can be confusing and is often a source of confusion for folks that are new to Blender. And what they often do is they'll come down here to this viewport display and they'll change the color here. And that works. You can see that now the cubes have changed colors. Problem is, if you render this, the cubes are actually pink. They don't represent the viewport display color. That is just getting shown in the viewport display. Now, one way to get around that is the top right here. We can change how the viewport is rendering things. We'll come up here and we can get a material preview. We click that. We can now see that our cubes are pink and what we're seeing in the viewport is reflecting the base color in our material. Now you may have noticed that all the cubes turned pink and that's because they are sharing a material. If I click on any one of these, you can see that they all share the same pink material. Now let's imagine you want to add a second color to an object and we can do that. So let's click on the middle cube. We're going to go into edit mode and then over here in the materials properties, we're going to add a material slot by pressing this plus button. And when we do that, we get this option to create a new material. And so I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to name this one blue. And then I'm going to come down to the base color and I'm going to give it a blue color, something like so. You'll notice nothing's happened. And that's because we have to assign a material to a given face. So I'm going to select these two faces and you'll notice that it selected the pink material, which is what those faces are assigned. I'm going to click on the blue material and then click assign. And those two faces are now blue. So like I said before, materials can be shared between objects. So I want to come over here to this cube and make this face blue. I can do the same thing. I need to add a material slot, but this time, instead of creating a new material, we want to reuse that same blue material. And to do that, we're going to use this drop down menu here. We can choose the blue material. And then once again, we have to assign that material to that face. If we render, we can see that the blue and the pink are now shown on our cubes. This sharing of materials between objects is a really good practice to do. And one of the reasons that is, is if you want to tweak or adjust this color, let's say we want to maybe darken this blue up a little bit, something like so. When I change the color on the material, it changes the color for all the objects because they're using the same shared material which makes iteration or small tweaks and adjustments in your scene quicker and easier rather than having to change the color on multiple materials or multiple objects. Now, another fun thing to do with materials and even with low poly models is to add some emission or allow the material to emit some light. And you can do that by scrolling down here and you can see this emission channel. And right now it's set to black and we can lighten that up and give it a little bit of blue. Now, it doesn't necessarily change a lot in the viewport, but if we render this image, you can see that now those faces are brighter and they kind of appear to be emitting some light. And then to make the effect more dramatic, I'm going to come up and change my render engine from EV to cycles. And then I'm going to come and turn the light down, make it less bright. I'm going to go from 100 watts to 10 watts something like that. Then we can render this and see the results. We can really see that those faces are emitting light. We can see a glow on the plane below it. We can even see a blue glow on each of the cubes that is next to those faces. But we can actually take this a step further. So let's click on one of our cubes, come back to our materials properties, and we're going to make sure that we're on the blue material. We're going to change the shader. We're going to change the code of how this is getting drawn. 
right here you can see on this surface, this is the principled BSDF shader. If I click on that, we have this option here of emission. Now, when we do that, we've lost our color, but that's easy to set back. You can set it back to a blue. What we've also gained here is the strength setting. So I can actually turn this up so we can emit more and more light. And again, we can render this and see the results of this new shader. With the emission shader and the ability to adjust the strength, you can see that the effect is much more dramatic. We really have a light source that's shining this blue light across our plane and into our scene, which can be pretty fun in a low poly scene. So there you go. There's the basics of adding materials to a low poly model or a low poly render.